Hi everyone, I'm Gertie and welcome back to my online L'Amour Dress class. If you haven't seen the previous segments of this class, please do go ahead and catch up on those. And to catch you up on what we're doing here, this is the L'Amour Dress class that was previously on my Charm School site. It was a paid course. In light of current world events, I am releasing it to you free of charge. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to stay home and sew. So please enjoy the class. Also know that a lot has changed about the pattern since I released this class. We've now released it in sizes two through 20 with A through H cup sizes, as well as adding new design elements. So check it out, buy the pattern on the Charm site, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to me on Patreon, stay healthy, Stay safe and stay home and sew, and I'll see you soon. In this chapter, we're gonna be talking about making a bodice muslin. The bodice fit on this dress is so important that I would really recommend that you make a test version in muslin or another fabric that you have around that you can easily just sew up to get a good real world look at the fit on your body. So I'm gonna be using a real life example today. My friend Amy is coming by in the next chapter and she gave me her measurements ahead of time. And what they are, we're gonna be looking at her measurements and then the finished measurement chart. So I hope this gives you a sense of how you would use someone's body measurements and then the finished measurement chart to choose a size. So Amy is pretty petite. Um, she wears a 32C bra size. Her upper bust is 32 inches. Her full bust is 34.5 inches and her waist is 27 inches. So I didn't know this going in, but she corresponds pretty well to the finished measurement chart along the C cup the size four, okay? So the full bust would be 35 inches, giving her half an inch of ease in the bust, which is perfect. Um, the, her upper bust, the finished measurement is 32 and a half versus her 32 inches. So again, half an inch of ease is perfect. You don't want it to be more than an inch. And then her waist is 27 inches compared to uh, 26 and a quarter on the finished measurements. So I wanted to give her a little extra room at the waist. So what I did was I added, I just graded out from the underarm down to the waistline and gave her a quarter inch at each side seam, which would reduce the overall circumference of the waist because there are four seams or four sides to each seam, so front, back, front, back, that's four, that would add up to an inch. So once, once I did that on the pattern, that meant that her finished waist measurement size would be 27 and a quarter, giving her an, a quarter inch of ease, which is perfect for a dress like this, which has that very nipped in waist. So let's talk about how to make a muslin for the bodice of this dress. I'm not gonna show you how to do the halter strap in the muslin. That's really sort of insignificant to the bodice fit. So the pieces that you would be using in your pattern, I'm gonna move the instructions out of the way now, but you're gonna be using piece number one, the center front bodice, and I chose the C cup for her. And then piece four, this is the lining side front bodice. It doesn't have the inset seam. So this is perfect just to check the fit because you don't have to worry about that fiddly little seam or the halter strap. We're just going to check the fit of essentially the lining, which corresponds to the fit of the outer bodice. So this is a great strategy. So piece one, piece four, piece five, which is the side back bodice, and piece six, which is the center back bodice. So again, just make sure that for pieces one and four, you're choosing the correct cup size because there are four different cup sizes in this pattern. So you're going to sew up a muslin. You're gonna cut these four pieces out in muslin, and then you're going to sew up an actual bodice muslin. And you can, you can uh, check and reference the instructions, the printed ones, or you can go to the later chapters in this video if you need a little help on sewing the princess seams, the zipper, the pleat, any of that stuff. So know that all of that comes later. For this, you're using a machine basting stitch. So this is a quick and dirty version of the bodice. Um, I've sewn it all together. I've sewn the center front pleat, princess seams, and then very important, one thing I like to do on my muslins is I always do stay stitching at 5 eighths of an inch 
around the neckline and around the waistline. And then I press that in because that's the only way you're really gonna get a sense of where the finished neckline is and the finished waistline. Otherwise, you're looking five eighths of an inch beyond the waistline or the neckline and you're not really getting a realistic sense of what the fit is. The next thing I've done is put a zipper in. So just a very quick and dirty lap zipper. You can see my stitching isn't super straight on this one, but I was just going for speed here. So I used a, actually a 24 inch zipper, um, just whatever I had on hand. You need it to be long enough so you can get this over your hips, right? So it essentially has a little tail hanging down here. And the next thing that I like to do on this muslin is to use masking tape to tape spiral steel boning lengths into the princess seams at the very least. You could do the boning all the way around if you wanted. I feel like for the muslin, it is most essential to have that spiral steel boning on the princess seams. Otherwise, it kind of collapses. You can't get a really good sense of the fit unless it's fully supported along the princess seams. So I'm gonna show you quickly how I did that. Um, I have a length of spiral steel boning that's cut to the correct length from top to bottom of the princess seam and then some masking tape, okay? So this is just what you would find at the hardware store for painting, um, and you can just tape in the spiral steel boning as a temporary measure. This is a trick that I learned um, from corset makers who have all sorts of great trip, tricks and tips for using spiral steel boning. So cut a length of the masking tape. It's gonna be long enough for the princess seam. Just tear it off. And then underneath that seam, you're just gonna center the spiral steel boning along the princess seam and tape it in place as best you can. You can see that I've notched and clipped my princess seam allowances. So you're gonna kinda of have to work around those. Again, if you're unsure of how to sew a princess seam, please reference the later chapters in this course. And then this will be a practice run too. Okay, so now we have spiral steel boning. Oops, that's not quite straight there. Let me just make sure I don't have any weird folds or anything. Okay, so again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just putting in this masking tape as a temporary measure. Just get it as straight as you can. And then I'm gonna lift this up. You can see that there's already some good structure built into this. So just through uh, masking tape on the princess seams, using that spiral steel boning as a temporary measure, we're getting some, some nice supported shape to the princess seams. Okay, so that's it for now. The next thing I'm gonna do is get my friend Amy in here and we are going to do a test fit. to have my friend Amy Appel here today to help me with the fitting to demonstrate how we would fit a muslin. So Amy is the designer of an amazing line of knitting patterns called Poison Girls, which are all very vintage inspired and amazing and you should definitely check them out. Thank you so much for helping me today, Amy. You're welcome, it's my pleasure to be here. So first off, we have her in the muslin. You can see she's just wearing a high-waisted skirt so you're not seeing any skin here. But um, she's wearing the bra that she would wear with a dress. That's very important, you wanna wear the right undergarments when you're testing out the fit. So first of all, it looks pretty amazing on you. I think we picked the right size, but how does it feel to you? It feels pretty good. Yeah, it feels like a good starting point. Okay. I think there's a couple things we could probably do. How would you wear it differently? Like just because fit is so personal, how do, what's your sort of impression of it? I think I would like it a little tighter. You'd go a little tighter? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we were saying earlier that Amy is similar to me, that we like things a little on the snugger size and we're not I'm not afraid to wear something a little close fitting. So I will say be careful as you're fitting the muslin. Don't go so tight because we are going to have more layers in here. We're gonna have spiral steel boning, we're gonna have the underlining, we're gonna have the lining. So that is gonna take up some space inside the bodice. So keep that in mind, don't go too snug. But I will say, I did add some at the waist for you, but I'm almost thinking I might take in the seams just a little bit right here we could take in the side seams. Would that feel a little bit better to you? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so I would just go ahead and pinch this out and then pin it. It's about an eighth of an inch here. So sometimes in fitting you find that you have to redo things or undo things that you did. I added a bit to the waist for her, but now I might take a little bit away. So you can never really tell until you get it on the body. So I would just take that probably all the way up an eighth of an inch. That's the first thing I would do.
try not to pin you. <laughs> the next thing I'm noticing on Amy is that is it, does it feel like it's gaping a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I notice this a lot when I'm fitting people, and this is a very personal fitting thing along the princess seam at the top of the bust. There sometimes is like a little bit of gaping, and it's not so much when you're standing straight up like that, but I do notice when you move a little bit, you're getting a, a little bit of gaping right here. So for Amy, I would probably, and now of course the spiral steel boning is in the way, but I would take this in about an eighth of an inch on either side of the princess seam and taper it down to the apex of the bust. We don't want to make it small at the bust line, but just take that in so that it just hugs a little bit closer along the upper bust line there. The bust fit is great. I think the C cup is the perfect fit for you. The other thing I'm noticing is that, let's have you turn a little bit to the side. So Amy has a bit, so right like this, back that way. Amy has a bit of a sway back. You can see here there's some wrinkles along the back and it looks higher in the front of the muslin than it does in the back. So her waistline isn't exactly horizontal to the floor. So one thing I noticed is that if I take a little quarter inch tuck along the back of the pattern here from the zipper and then taper it to the side seam. Now, Amy, can you just kind of raise your arm up there a little bit so that they can see? That should be creating a more horizontal line. So as you were doing this fitting, you would want to be looking in the mirror or having someone help you to make sure that you're getting a nice line that is parallel to the floor, okay? We want it to look horizontal there. But I already am feeling better about her fit in the back now because she's not getting those wrinkles. And granted, everything will be a lot smoother once you have the boning on the back princess seams, but we don't want to rely on that too much. So we want to make sure that this is the correct length for her body. And I feel much better about how that looks once I've taken a little tuck out there. Everything else about the back looks perfect. So turn back around towards me. There you go. All right, so I feel like, how do you like where the, the waist is hitting you here? Again, this is something we were saying is a really personal thing for people where they like their waistline to be. Does that feel about where you would wear your, your waistline? Yeah, that feels about right to me. Okay, so what I would do for Amy is actually take the back up to the point that it was even with the front and then not worry about lengthening this at all in the front. So that's what I would do for you. Other than that, I feel like it's a really good fit. Okay. I can't wait to see you make this dress. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for helping us out today, thank Amy. Thank you for having me. Okay. I am working on Amy's pattern pieces to do her fit adjustments. I got out pieces one through six because we are going to make changes to all of them. So let's start with that little um, pinch we were taking out at the top of the princess seam. It was just doing a little bit of gaping. So first I'm looking at pieces one and four. That's the center front bodice and the lining side front bodice. And I'm just going to take an eighth of an inch out of either side, and you can see I've already drawn this in, so I'm just gonna kinda show you how I did it. Eighth of an inch, I like to use these clear gridded rulers for my pattern making changes, and then a colored pencil, just taking an eighth of an inch in from the curviest point of the bust up to the neckline. And same thing on this side piece, an eighth of an inch at the top and tapering down to the original line at that curviest point of the bust, okay? So that's pieces one and four. Now you're also gonna to need to make this change on piece two. So let me swap this out here because this is the outer dress piece and you can see that that's that funny little inset seam. So just the same thing here so that it matches the lining piece. Uh, taking an eighth of an inch out here, tapering down to nothing at the curve of the bust. So that's gonna reduce her gaping there. Okay, the next thing I wanna look at is her side seams. So let's look at piece number four again, the lining side front bodice. Just taking an eighth of an inch all the way down, okay? So one little grid on the clear ruler and drawing an eighth of an inch line all the way down. So that's going to take her bodice in by half an inch all the way around. Okay, lining side front. We need to repeat that on a couple pieces. Let's see. So the other piece for the front here, let me get the front piece actually. The other piece for the front would be piece three. Okay. So this is the outer bodice rather than the lining, which we just did. So I'm taking an eighth of an inch again, all the way down the side seam. So that take care, that takes care of both front pieces. And then we want to grab the back piece 
piece five, the side back bodice. This is the side seam here. I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch all the way down on this one. Make sure your pencil is nice and sharp. If it's dull, you'll be drawing a line a little further in than you intend to. Okay, so an eighth of an inch all the way down on the side back bodice. And then the final thing we need to do is that sway back adjustment. And out of all the changes we're making here, this is sort of the most complicated, but it's not hard at all. Uh, what we're gonna do is on piece six, this is the center back right here. See how five and six fit together? That's the triple notch where they fit together. So I know that that's the center back where the zipper goes in. So at the lower back, I'm gonna draw a line. So you want this to be kind of between the notches and the waistline. I'm going to draw a line that's perpendicular to center back here. Take a line across here like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on piece five, the side front bodice. And this one I'm making perpendicular to the grain line. Okay, so I have a line drawn across both. And the first thing I'm gonna do is on piece six, I'm gonna cut all the way across like that. And here I wanna lap this over. And remember I took a quarter inch tuck for Amy. So actually what I wanna do is lap this over by half an inch, okay? Because a quarter inch tuck is a double tuck which adds up to half an inch. So it needs to overlap by half an inch. And I know that students always look at me like I'm crazy when I do this, but if you kind of work out the, the math in your head, it's a double inch, I'm sorry, a double quarter inch tuck, and then all we're taking away here is half an inch. I promise it works out. Okay, and I'm gonna tape that down. So I've just shortened that effectively, so she's not gonna have that excess fabric in the back. Next thing I wanna do is see how now I have a jagged line over here? You're gonna wanna smooth out this line. You can just trim that away. Okay, and piece five is a little different because we wanna take out that half an inch at this seam where it meets with piece six. Let me grab that piece again. We wanna do the same thing because these pieces are getting taped, I'm sorry, they're getting sewn together. So they need to fit together. But over here, we don't actually wanna take anything out at the side seam. So instead of taking a tuck that goes all the way across, we're gonna take out a wedge. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna cut along this line, but I'm gonna leave a hinge at the side seam. And then I'm gonna overlap, but only at the princess seam on the back. Okay, so I'm just, see this is sort of a hinge like that. I'm gonna overlap it by that half an inch on the seam, but it hasn't changed anything on the side seam. So these two pieces will now still fit together and the side seam will still fit together. But you might notice that I've created kind of a funny looking piece here, so I need to smooth out some lines. So what I would do here, I'm gonna grab another color, is from top to bottom, you just wanna smooth out this line. Okay, so I would just cut along there. And then on this side, we're gonna kind of add that back by taping some new paper underneath there and then drawing a new straight line there. Okay, so I'm not gonna show that whole process, but I think you get the idea that all I'm gonna do is draw a straight line from top to bottom, correcting that weird little jag there and essentially straightening out the piece. Okay, so those are all of Amy's changes. We did the sway back, we did that little um, gap on the top of the princess seam on the front, we did the side seam, and we made sure to correct all the pieces, both the front lining and the outer 
front dress. Next, we're gonna talk about cutting out your fabric. So start with your main dress fabric. There are cutting layouts included on the instruction sheet, so definitely reference those. But I'm just gonna talk you through some of the key points to cutting out this dress, things that you might not know already. So I'm not gonna take you through cutting out each piece, but definitely things that you're gonna to wanna to look out for. So I'm gonna demonstrate on this 60 inch wide eyelet. It has um, a scalloped edge on one side, so you'll be able to see where the selvage is really clearly. The other selvage is just um, straight over here. Here it is. So what we're gonna be doing is cutting out on the cross grain. This dress is entirely cut on the cross grain. And what that means is normally you would fold selvage to selvage when you fold your fabric out, right? So you would put those two selvages right on top of each other and then you would have a fold over here and you would cut your pieces like that. Now I deal with the cross grain a lot because I love really big skirts, because I love the 50s and it's all about big skirts. So that means that this often isn't wide enough to cut out those big skirts. So what we end up doing is cutting on the cross grain. And that just means that you're gonna fold the other way. So just watch carefully. What I'm gonna do is I'm folding those selvages on top of each other. See how the scallops are now on top of each other. And I'm folding out the full length of the fabric and that's gonna give me that much more width to work with. So I'm gonna lay this out on the table. You might need to do this on your floor because this gets really big and wide. And, um, but I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it and hopefully you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about. Okay, so selvages on top of selvages. My fold is now over here rather than parallel to the selvage. So I wanna show you how I would cut out a piece on the fold like piece number eight, which is the skirt front. My fold is now over here. So I would place that fold line directly on the fold over here. Okay, the other skirt is cut out opposing to that one. It's sort of like a fan shape with a fan shape. So that one's gonna be over there. It's not on the fold, it's the skirt back. And then let's talk about how the bodice pieces are cut. They are still on the lengthwise grain. So all the bodice pieces, like piece one, are gonna be cut with those grain lines parallel to the selvage, okay? So they're gonna be going in this direction, the skirt's in this direction. And you can see the grain lines are still the same. Grain line's going that way parallel to the selvage. Grain line is parallel to the selvage over here. So it's the same idea, you just have your fabric folded a different way. I want you to be really careful with piece one. This is a mistake I keep making, despite the fact that I designed this dress and have made about seven of them now. This pleat mark, can remind you an awful lot of a cut on fold mark, but it's an arrow that shows you which way to fold the pleat. And this is meant to be cut, not on the fold. So there's a center seam. So don't be tempted to put this over on the fold here with your um, piece number eight skirt piece. This goes over here, you're cutting two of them, okay? No fold. All right, that's important. A Couple other things that are important. Pockets, okay? We all love pockets. So we need to cut four of this. There are two of these pieces on each side of your skirt. You're gonna place it down once, cut it, and then place it again. It doesn't matter if you turn it over or not. You can if you need to um, gain more space that way, if that helps you gain space, but you don't need to. It just cut once, lift it up, cut again. Same thing with the halter straps, okay? The halter ties. There are two for each side, so you're gonna cut this twice for a total of four. Okay, so put it down, cut it, lift it up, cut it again. Those are all the things I wanted to warn you about about the main fabric. So let's talk a little about the lining. It's the same idea with your lining fabric, okay? You just cut it on the crosswise grain, lay it out like we did here. The pieces are different for what you're cutting for the lining, so keep that in mind and really follow those fabric layouts on the instruction guide. The next thing you're gonna to need to cut is your muslin. Okay, so that is for your underlining. So you only need a little bit of that because it's only the outer bodice pieces. So about half a yard should do it. So that's an easy one to cut. So three separate things that you're cutting, your main fabric, your lining, and then your underlining. Okay, so cut away, that's gonna take a little while. And then the next thing I wanna show you is after your pieces are all cut, you're gonna to want to um, transfer your markings and your notches. So let me get this 
fabulous eyelet out of the way. And then the best thing to show this on is one of the bodice lining pieces, okay? There are notches on almost every one of these pattern pieces. Those are the little triangles on the side. And my favorite way to transfer notches is to just snip right into them. So just snip, snip, snip into each point, okay? And then what you end up with is um, these little slits in the back that you can match up when you're sewing your seams. A lot of people like to cut out those triangles or they like to transfer them with chalk. I feel like it's one of those things, whatever you learned is usually the most comfortable way for you. So stick with what you like best, but that's my preferred method. The other things that you're going to want to transfer are the boning placement guides. Those can go onto the lining pieces. You don't need to worry about that for the outer fabric or the underlining because the boning only goes on the lining. So they're in gray and you're going to find the size the line that corresponds to your size. So I'm cutting out a six here, and I can tell that this gray line is the six because it goes to the top of the six. So I like to transfer these with um, this waxy tracing paper, and you can see this has traveled around with me quite a bit, and it's, it's well loved at this point, but um, it's still holding strong. So this is a wax coated tracing paper, and I'll just do one on the upper layer on the wrong side. So I just slip this wax side down between the pattern and the fabric. And I'm gonna use my tracing wheel to trace along that line. And it's a very faint line. Unfortunately, I don't think you're gonna be able to see on the camera here, but um, it's green on, I'm sorry, it's yellow on the green. So it's blending in a lot here, but I will be able to see it when I'm sewing. So that's all I'm worried about. You're going to want to do the same thing on the underside. We have two pieces here, right? So I'm going to put that wax side up, and then again, squeak along your line, and then check that it's visible for you. This does come in darker colors if you um, have a hard time reading a certain color on your color of fabric. So those are the important things, or after you have all your pieces cut out, you're gonna be transferring those notches, and you're going to be transferring any boning placement lines onto your lining only. And then we're ready to get started.